first, I'm gonna try a defrost. Should be in defrost right now, so it's still on. I'm gonna have to gauge up. Maybe we're not cutting out properly or something. So yeah, basically this is not set right, so. So yeah, I didn't have the knobs for this, so I just took off the plate. It's held in by one screw. And then since I needed to adjust my cutout, it was this one. And as soon as I moved it, it turned off. I'm gonna just keep an eye on the pressure and make sure that this is basically calibrated to the pressures that we need. Basically, it should shut off around 10 or a little bit under and then turn on between 30 and 40 or whatever your preference is. So the heaters were trying to, the defrost timer was trying to kick in with the heaters and this was not pumping down. It was at seven PSI and still pumping. Um, or still trying to run, you know. So it should be an easy call, just calibrating this, adjusting it and all that. And I've been loving this MB3 bag because I carry the probes with me on the side. And then I have this that I check a lot of temps with my, my clamp is missing. I left it in my van, I guess. And I carry this in here. So right now I'm gonna go make sure the heaters are working. And I'll show you what that looks like. too cold to check right now but fans are still on so they must have a bypass delay on it not gonna worry about that today I'll just mention it to them that that's an issue we just need to get this defrosted and you can hear it and see that it's melting Okay, never mind. That's why it turned on. Let me mess with this thing again. Wrong one.
think I'm just gonna replace it. Cause right there, what is it, 35 and about 20. That's 15 and that's already double. Cause I have 70 to side. Try to kick out. I might just replace it. So I got my pressure control. I already put a small bead of a uh, nylock. And we're just gonna hot swap it. So there's like very little PSI right here. So I'm gonna quickly disconnect that and then plug that one in that way I don't have to vacuum and it's a low side so it's not gonna be a big deal and we'll try that Installed, easy. Now I can just wire it up where it was. And this one cuts out at 10, so we'll test that out. Run it a little bit, run a defrost, all that. So I remember to turn off power. I almost shocked the crap out of myself. And so we got one lead that went here, and I gotta crimp that down because it's super loose. Uh, so that goes on. L1 basically and the other one I'm gonna tie into here I'm just gonna cut it splice it and tie one blue there and one blue to where the yellow went because this wire is gonna go through and it's already gonna be like strapped over here but it basically is in series with the other pressure controls so there's nothing I can undo I just have to cut and wire it up here so we'll do that, tidy up, and test it out. And all you want to do to, to crimp this is use a like a needle nose and just push down on it. So that's a loose end. Just gotta crimp it. Trusty pillbox. Got my connector. And they always give you a lot of slack on the uh, wires there if they're already pre-spliced. So just make sure you cut off the excess that you don't need. So for instance, if I put this connector on, I cut off enough so that it's not sticking like way out. And you get a better crimp. All right, so we're good there. Just tie strapped it. Nothing too fancy with this one. Uh, the wire's kind of a mess already. I'm gonna leave this one. I just cut it there and the wires. And I'll take this down to throw away. I'll leave that in case somebody wants to get the original, but I see no harm in leaving that one. And on this side, I tie strapped it. I forgot to cut this one. Tie strapped it here, tie strapped it to the tie strap that was already there, just so that they're all together. Everything is fine over here, and we're gonna test it out and I'll clean up. So that's good, it's supposed to be in defrost, and we'll see if it melts the ice. All right, much better, the fans are actually off, so now I know it's in defrost for sure. 
not an issue like I thought before. It's already melted. There you can see the heaters. They are working, all of them are working. Yeah, we're good. So I tried looking in there. Uh, I am gonna have to take off this and the blades to wash outside. So I was trying to look in there. The coil doesn't look too bad, but I obviously have to take off the guards and the blade because the blade, the blade is frozen with some frost. And a lot of this will just come off on its own. This will come off pretty easy. So I gotta remove these. And if I have to, I'll throw some water on the coil, but hopefully we don't have to, or not a lot. Had to bang off all the ice to get to the screws, but let's see. Yeah, we're gonna need some water. Pretty thick. To get around all night. Like that. So let's get all this off. Look at this shit. I was trying to get the ice off here. And that's not even on there. That's why I like that these expandable hoses have this uh, shutoff valve. And if not, I have backups for like any other hose that I use. And the nozzle I was gonna use is missing the gasket and I know I have extras, but I can't find it and I'm kind of in a hurry today. So put this one on and now we're good. Just keep an eye on your water because the last thing you want is for this to overflow in a freezer. I hate getting motors wet, but there was no other way. Just try and cut out, you know, the blocks don't try and melt everything. You just cut out what you can and take out pieces as you go. So now I gotta do this side, check the compartments and get off all this excess ice here so we're getting clean and yeah keep going all right making progress still have some to get off on the sides and over here They're both missing the same nut for some reason. And I had to tighten these because these were super loose. <laughs> 